Good afternoon, YouTube. Today's video is going to be focused more on the multi-cluster aspect. And I'm going to focus today on Kubernetes multi-cluster. So in the past, I've been talking a lot about multi-cluster using OpenShift. And now I'm pivoting to strictly Kubernetes. So multi-cluster Kubernetes is a type of Kubernetes deployment method that consists of two or more clusters. And so this deployment method is highly flexible. And you can pretty much do quite a bit with it. We'll talk about some of that flexibility. You can also have, ultimately you can have clusters in the same physical, on the same physical host or different hosts within the same data center. So most of the time, potentially it's, it's, it's one cabinet for one cluster, potentially maybe another cabinet for different clusters, or you can spread clusters across cabinets. It, it also sometimes depends if, it, for example, if it's on a hyperscaler, it kind of depends upon how the hyperscaler is kind of built out. We're not, we're not going to go too much into the infrastructure of the multi-cluster. We're going to go more into, into this specific architecture. So the, the thing here is though, you can run <clears throat> an entire application on a single cluster, um, however, that simply is not enough in many cases today. So a lot of times we want to scale these applications across multi-clusters. So by using a multi-cluster Kubernetes architecture, you can really take advantage of the best that Kubernetes has to offer. And as you can see in this environment right here, I have this coffee application, this coffee pod spread across two clusters. So I originally built 127, but then I onboarded a new cluster of 128. And now I'm running the same application in, in each cluster. And what I would like to do is I would like to distribute traffic between the clusters. Now, you can do this in many different ways. You could use a ratio to kind of distribute the traffic. And I'll provide a specific demo on ratio coming up in the future. But this first example is going to be something very, very, very simple. This first example, I'm really going to focus on really just kind of like the introduction here, and then we'll kind of build over the course of the up and coming months of the different scenarios, different examples. So this demo covers the basic concept of multi-cluster Kubernetes architecture with talking a little bit about the benefits and the challenges and why you should adopt the deployment. Now, what's really important here is that Big IP is the gateway. And so the gateway is going to distribute the traffic or steer the traffic to the different clusters, whether that's cluster 127 or cluster 128. The applications in this example are exactly the same. Big IP would distribute the traffic based on the default algorithm, which is a round robin algorithm. You can change that algorithm. Big IP will also maintain persistence. In this example, the persistence is of type cookie. It's a default type persistence. All of these options can be changed in the CRD. It's a simple CRD configuration. You can change them if you need to, or if you want, you can keep it default. And in this example, we're going to keep that default. So the biggest thing here is that the networks themselves have to be unique. And so if we take a look at the big IP, to achieve multi-cluster Kubernetes, a CNI is required that is not using an overlay. In this case, we're using the Calico CNI. And so I've configured Calico in these two clusters, and these two clusters are advertising their, their networks, basically their pod networks, via BGP to the peer. In this case, the big IP is the peer. And so you can actually see this in the route. And um, you can see in the route right here, you can actually see 244, which is, which is, the, first, which is the first cluster, 244 here, and you can see 246, which is the second cluster. So 10.244 is the first, 10.246 is the second, and each of these are nodes. And so basically 65, 66, 75, 76. So there's the master, there's the client, there's the master, there's the client. So you can kind of see here that what Calico is doing is basically advertising what they called node to mesh. And so it's publishing the node IP or injecting the node IP for that subnet. 
And so what the what 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 big IP will do is it will route anything on 10.244 to the node IP, which will then get distributed to the mesh. And that will happen across the calico distributed switch or the calico switch that's running on the node um, as a pod. And so there has to be a CNI in here involved. And the preferred CNI for Kubernetes is Calico because it's not using an overlay. And so there's no tunnels required on Big IP. This will not work with tunnels because you cannot create a tunnel per network or a tunnel per pod. Uh, so that's that's the problem. Multiple tunnels uh, with multiple VNIs is just not something you want to do. So the option is static routes, node port, or use Calico CNI or OVN Kubernetes, but OVN Kubernetes is just not popular in Kubernetes, but it's extremely popular and default in OpenShift. And so if you're using OpenShift, OVN is the way to go. If you're using Kubernetes, then I'd highly recommend you use the Calico CNI. And so that kind of shows us a little bit here. And so you can see that the routing is is taken, is, 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 is all handled by that CNI. So if I look at the gateway, the big IP, there's no virtual, there's no public IP here. So the goal is to create a public IP. Now, how do we do that? So let's take a look at the CRD. And so the CRD here is what's important because the CRD is basically what's going to configure the public IP with the service that um, big IP is going to watch. Now, because we have a multi-cluster, it's really important. CIS has to monitor the informer. CIS has to monitor this, basically the service. It's the informer of the service for the endpoint for the coffee pod because that's what's in the CRD. And CIS also has to monitor this service as well in the remote pod. So let's take a look at the at the CRD and let's see how how we actually achieve that. So we'll take a look at this specific user guide. And what we'll do is we will go into, let's take a look at the CRD first, at this coffee CRD. And I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can actually see this. Okay, so here is the CRD. This is the virtual IP that I'm gonna connect to. And here is my host. And this is of slash coffee. And this is my service that's running in the in Kubernetes. And you'll notice here that I have this thing called extended service definition for the remote cluster. And so this is my remote cluster of, I, I, I just, this could be any name. I just called it kubeconfig because this is the name that is configured. Think of it as the, in the gateway configuration. And I'll show you what the gateway configuration is in a minute. So you actually have two configs. You have this gateway configuration that defines um, the primary and secondary cluster and the role, whether you're running standalone, whether you're running active-active or active standby. And it configures the it configures that deployment. It also has all of the other additional type of uh, configuration that you would need, maybe certificates, maybe network policies or management policies. It it, it, it is ultimately your gateway configuration, right? Your, your routing configuration is handled separately. And I think this model, this two-tier architecture, really works well for like the whole concept of gateway API, except we're not using the gateway API. We're actually using the config map API to do this. And so you can see this is a config map. This is of global config map. CIS is configured to read this config map when it boots. And you can see here that my ex extended spec is primary, cl primary cl cluster of 127, secondary cluster of 128. Now, here's the key. It's these secrets. The secrets is so that CIS can use Kube client to access the second cluster, the remote cluster. So what I've done is I've copied the admin.conf over from one from the remote cluster 128 to 127 and I've created a secret and so let's go and take a look so if I go to to the primary cluster and do a kube ctl get secrets you can see 
my two secrets are here. So there is 127 secret, 128 secret. So the CIS can use these secrets based on that config map, right? Right here, it's cluster name, 128 secret. That's the secret there. It can use the secret to be able to monitor the informer of that second cluster. So that's really, 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 really important. So I'm going to minimize this down a little bit. So CIS here is using that kube config, that, kube se that, that Kubernetes secret to monitor the informer for this application. And it knows what that application is based on the CRD. So inside the CRD here, it knows what the application is because I'm specifying it right here in this extended spec. So kube cluster 128, the namespace and the service name. That is all. So when CIS creates this public IP, this virtual, when CIS puts this virtual on big IP for that host name, for this service, what CIS will do is it will pull all the endpoints, it will pull all the informers for that service in both these two clusters. If you have additional clusters, you would specify the cluster name, the namespace, and the service. And this service could be anything, and so could this, so could this namespace. It could be different if you wanted it. I just keep it simple, keep it the same. But that's basically what's happening. So let's go ahead and create this CRD. So we've created the CRD, and we're going to go ahead and monitor the logs. You can see that the configuration has been accepted. So the um, so CIS is, is plumbing the big IP. It's making an API call to the big IP. And so if we refresh this big IP, we can actually see that there is actually the virtual. And so the resource is what's important because it's a it's a it's a kube resource. And so let's take a look at this resource. So this is what was configured for the HTTP header of host for cafe.example.com with the path of coffee, go ahead and send to the pool. That's the pool of coffee. So it's coffee pool. And you'll see that there's six nodes, six, six pods in each pool. And so you can see here that there is three from 244 and three from 246. So if I happen to go and do a kubectl get pod minus n cafe, you can see that there is three coffee pods in this cluster and three coffee pods in the other cluster. And so that's how you get, and we can actually go ahead and reload the page. You can actually see there that this is incrementing like right there. Traffic is incrementing um, and um, that's the remote. There is the server IP. Let's see if we can make another connection here. It's gonna be using probably the same IP because of the cookie. Okay, that, yeah, 146, 146 is the server. So this is in, so this is in cluster one and 146 is also in cluster one. So I'm just hitting the first, probably the first pod, probably the first IP. Yeah, 146. Yeah, that's kind of how it is. I, I need to generate a little bit more traffic, um, generate a little bit more traffic to kind of to kind of get a nice distribution here. But that's that's not the point. I think ultimately seeing this right here, where you've got the 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 different clusters. Now, if if I wanted to take my one cluster down, my one twenty, my one twenty seven, then what would happen is these three pods would go away, and I would continue with my one twenty eight. So that provides a flexibility that you really don't have um, with using like with using other methods. So, for example, you could 
use DNS to do that or some kind of routing to do that. But all you would need to do in this instance here is really just take these is really just take these pods offline, take these pods offline, and they'll they'll get removed. And what'll happen is now one of these one of these clusters are ready for maintenance. And so that's why that this deployment method is so highly flexible, and really provides, I think, the way to do things in in this world of continue continue like iteration of Kubernetes instances. So what's happening is, is we're already we're already at 128. And so 129 will be here in no time. And you know, how does organizations kind of keep up? Um, it, it's not that easy necessarily to upgrade. So maybe this is more of a nuke and pave kind of kind of world. And so when we start doing this whole concept of nuke and pave, that's where this idea or this concept um, and I think this method of a multi-cluster Kubernetes is so critical. And so that's what this demo really focuses on. And so watch the space because there's going to be a lot more. The next demo that's, that I'm going to publish um, shortly is going to be an, of AB type deployment um, with ratio. And then we can get into a little bit deeper of maybe configuring like um, CIS in a like active standby environments where there's potentially one CIS in each cluster and kind of go down that path a little bit with maybe some more advancements there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps the algorithm. Make sure you subscribed. I'm at around 620 subscribers. I really want to get this um, in the new year to that 700 mark. So please, if you're not subscribed, subscribe it really helps. Um, again, with the with uh, with the visibility of these great demos. Um, building Kubernetes is not easy, two Kubernetes clusters with Galico and, and, and this architecture. So um, uh, definitely uh, like this video. And if you have any questions, any recommendations, what you would like to see, if you want to spend a little bit more time, um, please let me know. If you're going to KubeCon next week, that's going to be in Chicago, uh, November 6th to, I believe, like November 10th. It's the Monday through Thursday. Um, reach out to me. I'll be in KubeCon at the F5 booth, also at the Red Hat booth, showing some cool stuff there. So ping me if you're going to be at KubeCon. Um, let's get, let's, let's, uh, let's uh, do some whiteboard in. Uh, let me know how I can help you with your environment. Um, or if you just want to meet for a coffee or a beer, that would be great. Um, but go ahead and, and reach out to me either via YouTube, GitHub, or, or my... Um, LinkedIn or Instagram. Thank you very much.